Cecilia Sevillano, and in this video lecture, we will focus on referencing electronic sources. As referencing documents from the internet and databases is becoming more and more common, this aspect of referencing is very important today. In this video lecture, we will look at two things. First, we will look at how to evaluate websites to ensure the reliability of our sources. And then we will look at the general guidelines for referencing internet sources. These days, a large number of the sources you consult for your assignments will come from the internet. The internet can be a very valuable tool for research, but you must find quality web materials and use the materials appropriately in your writing. So it is essential that you first evaluate the websites you use. You may be wondering why this evaluation is important. The answer is simple. Basically, anyone can publish anything on the internet. There is, for example, nothing stopping me from publishing on the internet that the world is flat. We all know this is rubbish, but I can still publish it. So you have to evaluate it and decide if that information is reliable and useful for your purpose before you use it. I am sure you have seen websites which contain utter rubbish. Obviously, you can't use these in your assignment. This is because web sources do not have to be accepted or edited by any professional body before publication. And quite a number of web pages are used to market products and may contain misleading information. Also, political, religious, and other interest groups use web pages to spread information and publicize their cause. So it is important that you evaluate the website from which you get your information to assess whether the information contained in it is credible and will stand up to academic scrutiny. So how do we go about doing this? There are two things you must do. Firstly, ascertain who created the site. Then, assess how reliable the information is. Let's look at who created the site. What you want is a credible website contributor. So, look for an author or see if the page is signed. If the website does not have an author, be wary of using it. The author is not necessarily a person and may be a government department or a university, in which case it is usually a reliable source. If the author is a person, try to find out if he or she is affiliated to a university or other in educational institution. Is he or she an expert in the field? Do a Google search under that author's name and see what else comes up. Are there contact details or links for the author? Finally, check who sponsors the website. Is it a credible organization or institution? There are many off-the-wall organizations online, especially in the political and religious arena, so be doubly sure of the organization's standing. Google the organization's name and see what comes up. To find this information about the organization, the following general guidelines are suggested. Look for a header or footer on the web page that shows the affiliation. Then, look at the URL. The domain at the end of the URL address indicates what it is. .edu means it is an educational institution outside New Zealand. .com indicates a commercial website. .ac.nz stands for a university in New Zealand. .org means it is an organization. And .govt indicates a government website. Okay. Let's now look at assessing the information's reliability. As an example, let's look at the website of the New Zealand Retailers Association, specifically the page on Retail Research and Statistics. First, consider whether the site shows evidence of research using credible sources. Under the subheading Retail Market in New Zealand, 
We are given a copy of the statistical review of the New Zealand retail market for 2006, written by John Albertson. The information used by Albertson is provided by Statistics New Zealand, so that would be considered a credible source of information, as it would provide us with useful statistics. Next, does the site give us links to other reliable sites? Let's look at the subheading ACRS Insights Edition 64. Under this, we are given the latest information from the Australian Centre for Retail Studies including information on the retail industry worldwide and a PDF file to click on. This file brings us to the Australian Centre for Retail Studies, which in turn is linked to Monash University, hence a reliable site for information. The NCRA site, therefore, offers us good links to other reliable sites. The next point to consider is how current is the information on the site? Looking at the documents provided, the retail market in New Zealand is dated 2007 and the ACRS Insights Edition 64 is dated 2006. Hence, the information is current. Two more points to consider are, does the site provide a list of sources and can you trace those sources? The NZRA website satisfies both requirements. So, we can say on the whole, this website is a reliable source of information. In summary, these are the five things we need to look at. Who is the author? Is it a credible person or organization? What is on the website? Is it academic orientated material or is it trying to sell something? Where is it published? Is it published on the website of a reputable organization? When was it published? How current is the information? Why has it been published? Does it show evidence of research using credible sources? for referencing internet sources. When we reference, we want to direct readers as closely as possible to the information being cited in text. So it is essential to reference specific information rather than home pages or menu pages from an internet source. Let's look at this example. If I cited information from the New Zealand Retailers Organization, I would not give just the home page address but would provide the specific page from where the information was obtained from that site. For instance, instead of referencing this address, I would use the specific address of the page I used, say it was a resources page. Hence, this would be the correct URL or address. Do you see the difference? You should therefore bring your reader as close as possible to the information you cited rather than just providing the address of the home page. Just as importantly, ensure that the addresses or URLs you reference are in working order. In other words, check the address or URL again just before you hand in your assignment to make sure that it is still there. Always make note of the date on which you retrieve the information, in case the website is no longer available when your reader reads your assignment. Okay, so how do we format an end of text reference from an internet source? In this order, the following information is required. Author or authors of document, where possible. Publication date. Title or description of the document retrieval date or the date when you retrieved the document from the internet and the internet address or URL.
Now the internet address is a very important part of the reference as it is the only way your reader can locate the source. As I mentioned earlier, make sure it works and that it can be downloaded. Do transcribe it correctly and ensure the document has not moved. But what do you do if the web page has been removed and the information is no longer available? There are two things you have to do. First of all, for your reference list, you will need the date on which you retrieve the information, so make sure you have that date recorded. Secondly, if you think there is a chance the website might go offline, it is a good idea to print a hard copy of that site, particularly the section which you are citing. To be on the safe side, it might be a good idea to make hard copies of all sites that you use in your reference list and check the address just before you submit your assignment to see if the page is currently still online. If, when you are typing it in, the URL continues to another line, break it after a slash or before a full stop. Do not allow your word processing program to insert a hyphen at the break. Let's have a look at this example again. Do not place a full stop at the end of the URL. Now, let's take a look at an in-text reference for this document. You will notice that the in-text format is very similar in format as for non-electronic sources, which we deal with in the DVD on the basics of APA referencing. The only difference here is that instead of referencing a particular page, we must reference the paragraph on the web page that we are referring to. This is because web pages don't usually have page numbers. The article just goes on until it is finished. So, to direct the reader to the exact place on the web page, we simply count the number of paragraphs from the top of the page and use that instead of the page number. You will find that most of the journal articles you access for your assignments will be found in the university databases. These databases are electronic collections of journal articles. So, when you want to list a journal article from a database in your reference list, follow the same format appropriate to journal articles in a hard copy and add the date of retrieval and the name of the database. Let's look at an example. Here we have a journal article that was written by C. Preston in 2004. It appeared in the journal International Journal of Consumer Studies in the fourth issue of volume 28. It was originally published on pages 364 to 371 of that hard copy journal. You can also see quite clearly when the article was retrieved and the name of the database it was retrieved from. And that, basically, is all there is to know about referencing electronic sources. Let's recap what we have covered here today. First, we looked at how to evaluate websites to ensure the reliability of our sources. And then we looked at the general guidelines for referencing Internet sources. For more detailed information on the APA style, go to APA Online, www.apastyle.org. You could also get your own copy of the APA Publication Manual, which is available in most academic bookshops. I hope this video lecture has given you a better idea of what the confusing world of electronic referencing is all about. Good luck with your referencing.